this morning. Inflation jumped 5.4% in July compared to one year ago. That's at the consumer level. Michael Lee, back with us, the market watcher of the morning. I know you're still bullish. You're always bullish, Michael Lee. But what do you think this inflation rate and continuing inflation, what do you think that does for the market? You know, Stuart, I, I think either this month or next month, we, we've seen peak inflation. Okay, I, I think a year from now, you're going to be looking at supply gluts. And this all goes back to the shutdowns from COVID and the knock-on effects of that. It's simply a lot easier to turn the light switch off of the economy than it is to flip it back on. And, and these things haven't worked their way through the systems. And if you look at the key drivers of this number, used car prices. Used car prices are higher because you can't make new cars because of a chip shortage. Okay, That is going to solve itself. And then you look at airfare <clears throat> and hotels, uh, two industries that were, that were dying last year, that uh, are, have really made their way back and are dealing with supply constraints. So I, I think a lot of this is going to pass. And when you strip out a lot of that, uh, a lot of that stuff, and you strip out gas prices, obviously we have an administration that uh, really has has, a, has waged war on fossil fuels. Doesn't care how much you pay at the gallon. When you strip those sorts of one-time factors out, you're only looking at about two percent year over year, which is where we've been tracking for a long time. So I, I'd say um, you know this gives cover for the Fed. Okay. I, I think um, I think I, I don't I don't see inflation as an issue over the next few years. Okay, look, we've got a new high for the an intraday high for the Dow Industrials early this morning, a new intraday high for the S and P five hundred. You think we're going to keep on going up through the summer and into the fall, Stuart? New highs typically mean more new highs. And if you think about a, a stock or a, or an index or an asset hitting an absolute all time high. What could possibly be more bullish? Nobody out there has a loss. So there are no forced sellers. Yeah, so but we're all I, scared I think the economy- to death. Michael Lee, we are all, especially people my age, we're all scared to death that just at the point where we're about to retire, the market takes a steep dive and our pension funds are lagging. That's what we're all worried about. Hey, Stuart, you know, that's exactly why we've got a lot longer to go. If you thought and everybody thought we were going to keep going to the moon, that's when you want to be selling. When people are scared that the bottom's going to fall out and that pessimism, that typically means we have a lot longer to go. So I'm an adverse indicator. I'm an adverse indicator. Yeah. I'm worried about a hey, sell-off look. so the market goes up. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> unfortunately, that, that's, that's the way it works. Okay, well, I'll take it. I'll take it. If if the market (laughs) keeps on going up despite my climbing the wall of worry, uh, so what? Hey, Michael, I appreciate you being with us. We'll see you again real soon. Thanks, Stuart. Yep. Uh, Lauren's back. Uh, She's watching, uh, what do you want, Uh, cybersecurity? Yeah. I've got them on the screen right there. They're up big time. I know. So ransomware is on the rise. So you take a look at Norton.